Night vision has become a key technological advantage employed by almost all modern militaries, used on everything from helicopters to ground troops, and of course, modern tanks. But although this may seem like a strictly modern technology, their origin can be traced all the way back to the Second World War. Let's journey back and uncover the early origins of these devices. Throughout history, there have been countless tanks, all designed to kill. But not all have been a success. What happened to the ones that never made it, and why did they fail? My name is Konavar. Join me as we journey through time, uncovering failed projects and forgotten creations in Cursed by Design. Our story begins in 1929 with a Hungarian physicist named Kalman Tehani and his invention of an infrared camera for use on British anti-aircraft defenses. This marked the first infrared device to be invented and used in a military function. The Germans would go on to improve and implement this technology in their army with systems designed to be used with the STG-44 assault rifle, among others. Credit for the first tanks with night vision, however, would not go to the Germans. Surprisingly, the Soviets would beat the Germans by beginning development of night vision for their tanks as early as 1939. The first two of these devices, named Ship, or possibly Spike, and Dudka, were intended for use on the BT-7 light tank. The first of these designs, named Ship, featured two periscopes giving the wearer an almost snail-like appearance. The later Dudka design would look similar, although the periscopes were inverted, both only allowed the driver access to nighttime visibility. With a narrow field of view of only 24 degrees and an extremely limited range of 50 meters, that visibility wasn't much, but it was satisfactory enough to be put into production, being produced in plant number 211. The Soviets did not stop there, however, and during the war, 1942 to be precise, they began another project to create a night vision device, this time for the T-34. This device was still only intended to be used by the driver to allow movement at night like the previous design. Work was continued on this design until the fall of 1944. After this, the device, known as the IKN-8, was installed and tested on the T-3485. This work would prove to be critical in early post-war night vision development for the Soviets, although it was not used much during the war. As I mentioned earlier, however, the Germans also attempted to harness this technology for their armored vehicles. In 1942, an infrared device was designed for use on the Pac-40, and troop testing was favorable enough that it was decided to begin development for use on tanks as well. Several vehicles were equipped with this system, and specific dates are spotty, but one of the first was a Martyr II self-propelled gun with the system mounted above the gun as pictured here. The next and most famous use was on the Panther tank. Two separate versions were used on the Panther, with the first only being usable by the commander and was intended to provide 360 degree vision for him. The commander would then provide directions to the driver who would be completely reliant on him since he had no vision system for himself. The range of this device was twice that of the Soviet counterpart with 100 meters range and a slightly improved 30 degree field of view. In order to increase the view range, a much stronger infrared equipped vehicle known as the Uhu or Owl was developed. Built on the Sonderkraftfahrzeug 251, this would allow visibility up to a maximum of 700 meters for the Panther's sights and a maximum observable range of 1500 meters. The second version to be placed on the Panther would provide the driver, gunner, and commander with vision by using three separate night vision devices. However, the information is extremely spotty with fake images and information. The use of this second variation is not completely impossible though, with some information potentially describing it within some British reports, but I was unable to locate these. So without conclusive evidence, this is just a possibility. Regardless, this technology saw very little use during the war, but it was still fielded as examples were captured by the Allies and Soviets as the Germans abandoned their tanks. Today, one Panther equipped with a reproduction of the FG-1250 night vision device exists, although it is currently not on display from what I could find. Clunky and fragile, the systems employed during the Second World War may not have been instrumental to victory, but they paved the way for future warfare technology. In the years following the Second World War, night vision technology would go on to be used in every conflict from the Korean War to today, to varying degrees. For this reason, World War II night vision is commonly considered as Generation Zero for the evolution of this technology, with Generation One not being fully introduced until the Vietnam War. 
A special thanks to all my YouTube members for choosing this topic in the monthly poll. If you'd like to help decide future topics for this series, consider becoming one with the join button below. You'll also get access to the exclusive Curse Design Bureau Discord and more perks. All the support you choose to provide through that or through purchasing merch from my Teespring store helps me to further extend my archive of source material, allowing me to make these videos more and more in depth. So your support is greatly appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to like the video and subscribe so you won't miss the next episode of Cursed by Design, and catch up on all the episodes by clicking the playlist that will appear on your screen right now. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.